Good morning, brethren. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you to today's teen service. Uh, let's pray before we go any further. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor you and we praise your holy name for giving us a beautiful morning where we can share your word, sit at your table, and eat with you, O God. Father, we do pray that as we feed at your table, that you shall nourish us, you shall quench our thirst, you shall open our eyes that we may see, and you shall comfort our hearts because you are the God of all comfort. We bless you and we honor you for you are a loving God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, welcome to today's teen service where I would like us to go through a few verses and uh, go through our topic today, our sermon today on overcoming the days of trouble. Uh, if we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, it says that he has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the spirit gives life, but the spirit gives life, sorry. The covenant that we are given and which we are made ministers, competent ministers or competent servants of that covenant, it is a covenant of life. It is not a covenant of death. It is a covenant of life. The former covenant was governed by the law. And it is a covenant which the Bible says that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But one thing we need to understand, Jesus says that he did not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. And it was because of the law that the Lord Jesus died on the cross. And it is the same spirit who gave him life to resurrect. Because the law says that there are certain consequences for sin. And though Jesus was a sinless man, he took on our sin. And as a result of this sin, he died on the cross. If we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, it says that therefore, since through God's mercy, we have this ministry, which we can relate to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, which is this ministry, the ministry, the servanthood of a new covenant. We do not lose heart. Since we have this ministry, the ministry of life, which the covenant which the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6, that is the covenant of the Spirit who gives life, then we do not lose heart. Otherwise, if we were in the covenant of, 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 of the letter, then maybe we would lose heart. But now we have a Savior. We have the Spirit. We have the covenant which gives us life. And verse 2 continues and says that, rather, because of this ministry, because of this ministry that gives us life, that by this ministry, by this new covenant, we do not lose heart. We are hopeful. Our faith is not dead. Second, verse 2 says that, rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. Secret and shameful ways. We are obliged to renounce our secret and shameful ways because of the new ministry, because of the new covenant. The Bible continues and says in, second, in, in, in verse 2 that we do not use deception and also that no do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. In other words, by doing that which is right, by doing that which is true, we are not condemned. Our conscience is right. Our conscience is healed. And verse 6 says that, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. There is a statement I want, to, I want us to understand that he made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Therefore, by this light, we have been revealed into the glory of Christ. And if you go further in verse 7 to 10, it says that, but we have this treasure. Which treasure is this? We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. Therefore, we are jars of clay. There is nothing much that is expected from us. But because we have this treasure, we have 
because we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God. Therefore, what is in us is what shows that whatever we are doing, whatever we, however we are living, it is power and it is glory from God. When you look at the, at, when, you, when, you, when you regard us from the outside, we are jars of clay. We are weak men. But because of what is in us, then there is the glory and the surpassing power of God in us. And verse 8 continues and says that we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. And this is where we understand where our jars of clay, the treasure that we carry, what, what is defined, what it, what it actually defines. Verse 10 says that we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. This is the treasure in our jars of clay. This is the life in our jars of clay. This is the gold. These are the precious jewels in our jars of clay. There is, this is what gives us glory. This is what gives us power. The shame of the death of Christ, it is what is defined as our jars, is, is what is defined as the treasure in our jars of clay. And because of this treasure that is in our jars of clay, that because of this treasure, we may be hard-pressed. We may be hard-pressed on every side, but we will not be crushed. We may be perplexed. We may be confused. We may look at situations around us, and we may wonder where we are heading to, but we are not in despair, for there is hope. We, we, may, be, we, may, we, we, we may be persecuted, but there is an assurance that we are not abandoned. We may be struck down, but we are not destroyed. Why? Because Christ who died in us, he lives even till today. Christ who died, he lives even till today. That though Christ was hard pressed, was hard pressed, he was not crushed. That though he was perplexed, he was not in despair. He still had hope. This is a man who, though he is on the cross, he promises one of the thieves that today you will be with me in paradise. That is a man with hope. That though he was persecuted, he was not abandoned. Though he was persecuted and he was accused, he was not abandoned. He was risen from the dead. For indeed, if his sin, if, if, if the judgment that was passed on him by the Jews was true, then he would not have risen from the dead. Because sin would have had a right on him. Because sin, by sin, death came through. We also need to understand that though we are struck down, we will not be destroyed. Because we have in us treasures which are defined by the death of Christ. In our bodies, we carry around in our body the death of Christ. So that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Therefore, we need to understand where we are living. If we do not understand the times, if we do not understand where we are walking in, we need to understand that we are competent servants of the new covenant. We are competent ministers of the new covenant. We are competent priests. For Christ says that he has made us to be a kingdom of kings and priests unto his father. And therefore, this is the covenant of life and not the covenant of death. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 says that, Now brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. Paul reminds the Corinthians the gospel that he had preached to them, which is the gospel of the new covenant, the covenant of life. And, and verse 3 describes the gospel that, that he received. Paul says that for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. And this is what Paul received as verse 3 says that. He received that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and raised on the third day, and that he appeared to many, among them Peter and other disciples and other 500 more. So this is the gospel of the new covenant. That Christ died, that Christ was buried and he rose again, and that he appeared to many. 
And in these days, he says that the Lord shall not live in the houses built by the hands of men. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if indeed you are born again, your faith is of surety because Christ has indeed appeared to you. And if Christ has appeared to you, then there is hope to you that though you are perplexed, you will not be in despair. That though you are persecuted, you will not fall down. You will rise up again. You will rise up and you will find hope. What is there then to wait for? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 12 to 18, it says that, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? For indeed Christ, raised, Christ lives in you. And if indeed he lives in you, how do you believe? that there is no resurrection from the dead. If indeed he lives in you, how is it then that you believe? How is it then that your faith is shaken to the extent to believe that Christ does not live and therefore there is no resurrection for the dead? How can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised and your faith is in futility. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. If Christ has not been raised, it means then that, that death had a grip on him. And if death could contain, could, could hold back Christ, then it means that Christ was not the sinless lamb of God. For John indeed says that, behold, when he saw Christ coming, he says that, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of man. And if indeed death could hold Christ, we sin that death could not hold him. Death could not hold him because he was sinless. Man is held by death because man is not sinless. And if Christ is sinless, and if Christ is full of sin, then our faith, our ministry, our covenant is hopeless and it is in futility. Our service is in futility. Therefore, if Christ indeed lives in us, why is our faith shaken? And verse 14 says that, sorry, verse 15, more than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For if Christ did not, raise, he did not rise from the dead, we are all liars. We are false witnesses. And we deserve the penalty of a liar. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him. If in fact the dead are not raised. Verse 16. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. Verse 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. For there is no power to overcome sin if Christ has not been raised. Verse 18 then says that then, th then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we of all people are most to be pitied. We are the most to be pitied. If our hope is in a risen Christ, and yet indeed he did not raise from, he did not rise from the dead. But there is hope. There is hope for that which has been struck down. There is hope for that which has been accused. There is hope for that which is pressed. For, for there is hope for that which is in despair. You may look at your ear 2020 and say that it has been lost. It has not been lost for there is hope. For there is hope because we believe and we trust in a risen Christ. For our Christ indeed has risen. There is hope. I want to, I want to go on and say this. Our hope for any resurrection is by carrying the death of Jesus in our bodies. It cannot be just on our lips, but on our whole existence, we must carry the death of Christ. Christ Though we give him our body, he is interested. He wants everything that we have. And that is why we must die. He wants our lifestyle. He wants our friends. He wants our homes. He wants our businesses. He wants our schools. He wants our education. He wants our families. He wants everything that we have. He is not just interested in this physical body. He wants us all. And therefore, in everything that we do, the death of Christ must be seen in all that we do. 
our hope for any resurrection of whatever concerns us by is by carrying the death of Jesus in our bodies. It cannot be just by our lips, but our whole existence must carry the death of Christ. We need to ask ourselves, will everything be resurrected? Will everything be resurrected? Will everything be raised? Will everything that we have be restored? We get this answer. We need to understand that Jesus prays and asks for the restoration of what he had before with the Father. John 17 verse 5. In John 17 verse 5, when Jesus is praying to be glorified, he prays to the Father and says that, Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Our hope for the resurrection is in what was with the Lord. It is not everything. It is not everyone that will be raised. But we need to understand that what is in the Lord indeed will be raised. For he is the resurrection. If it is not in the Lord, then it will not be raised. We need to put our everything, we need to put our house in order and bring everything that we have, all that we are. We need to proclaim everything that we have under the resurrection, under the authority of Christ under the resurrection of our Lord. If we decide to put some things out of the Lord, then let it be assured to us that they will miss out on the resurrection. For at times we sit down and say, that watch and yake Christ chini, and then I deal with you. Whenever you put Christ down, you can be sure that you have missed the resurrection. Whenever you decide to do business without Christ, and offer bribes and offer on and, and, and do away with business practices as per the directions of the word of God, then we can be sure that whatever we are engaging in will die. Whenever we decide to take our bodies in a manner that does not proclaim the death of Christ in our bodies, then we can be sure that we will miss out on the resurrection. What is it that we have been doing that does not proclaim the death of Christ? For indeed, the death of Christ, it is a shame, for he was shamed on the cross. But are we willing to suffer the shame of Christ on the cross so that we can enjoy the resurrection of Christ? So that what we have can enjoy the resurrection of Christ? Are we willing to lay them down at the cross of Christ? First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 says that, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him until that day. What have you committed to the Lord? Have you committed to him everything? Or there's, are there some things that you are withholding from the Lord? And you are saying that these ones, Apana, these ones I cannot give him. It is high time as a young man, as a young woman, you learn to surrender everything to Christ. As we sing that I surrender all to him, the Bible says that the Lord says that these people praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from him. Let the songs that we sing indeed be a testimony and a witness of the competency of the new resurrection that we have in Christ. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 says that this is a faithful saying. And this is the word of God. That this is a faithful saying. The Lord is faithful. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, there is enduring to be endured. There is enduring. And we need to understand that it is, not, it is not possible that you will not endure. For you will have to endure temptation. You will have to endure trials. Be prepared that in this world that we are living, Jesus said that in this world you will have trouble. It is easy for us to, to, it is easy for us to believe that we will not have trouble. But be rest assured that there is enduring to be done. For the road that leads to destruction, it is wide and it is beautiful. It has beautiful things. 
that interest that interests the body but the law but that but the road towards the lord the, the, it is a narrow road it is a narrow road that is hard that is pressing and therefore there is enduring to be done for if we endure we shall also reign with him <coughs> if we deny him he will also deny us sorry if we are faithless yet because he is a father he remains faithful therefore if we want to overcome if we want to endure if we want to overcome the troubles if we want our hope to be built the first thing that we need to do let us carry the death of christ in our bodies let our bodies proclaim the death of christ the next thing that we need to understand is that we need we need to commit everything that we are. We need to proclaim. We need to commit everything that we have unto Christ. For he says that he is able to keep. And we need to believe and be persuaded. We need to be persuaded that he is able to keep. Do not look at 2020 and you are going to finish high school. Or even, or, or even do, do your KCP. Do not look at 2020 and think that you have lost an ear, that you have lost an ear, but believe in the Lord who is able to keep, who is able to preserve you. Do not look at your life and think that you have lost time. For indeed, before the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. For in him, he contains time in himself. Therefore, let our hope be renewed. Let our trust be renewed. Let us not walk like those who have no hope, who do not carry the death of Christ in their bodies. But let us walk like those who have hope. Let us believe like those who have hope. Let us believe that indeed he whom we have committed ourselves to, he is able to keep. And let us be persuaded that he is able to bring it to life. I pray that as young men and as young women, we will not lose hope. But indeed, we will find life. That even though we are hard-pressed, that they, even though we, 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 we are perplexed, that, we, that, even though we, that, that even though there are many troubles and, 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 and issues coming along our way, we will overcome as long as we commit our lives and everything that we are to Christ. I bless you and may the Lord do you good this morning and for the rest of your lives in Jesus name in the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen hello guys thank you for watching our service today please don't forget to subscribe click down here and subscribe and follow us on youtube instagram twitter and at home Thank you very much. Join us on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, Barikiwa.